promise you, it's not autistic girl. It's I kissed a girl and I liked it. Yeah, but you see how that's confusing though, right? Oh, thank God. What happened to you guys? We got pulled over. You yelled at a cop. She yelled at a cop. Oh my gosh, you just hadn't changed over your tags yet. Tell me where that falls under protect and serve. It doesn't matter. He had a badge, Katie. He is the rules. Calm down. You didn't get a ticket, did you? At what cost? The tenability of the American justice system? I've never seen anything like it. Before I could say a thing, she just laid into me with all these confused stereotypes. She called him a bacon eater. God, I hope that hard shoe chokes on all that bacon. Wow! You actually hate cops! I think. Right? It's like hating the glue to our society. What, what are you going to do if something really terrible happens? What if one of your friends, what if poor Daniel was murdered? What then? Ooh, I don't like this. Grow up, Soren. Even if Dan was brutally murdered, this is not like the movies where the cops would just magically solve the case. Right? Statistically speaking, Dan's killer is far more likely to get away scot-free. How about we choose a different name? Marta. Everybody likes Marta. Ooh, what if you didn't have to rely on cops, though? Our cops. Okay, if you could give the case of Dan's hideous but deserved dismemberment to any police department from any movie, which would you choose? Avenge me. Mm -hmm. It's Commissioner Gordon, right? Obviously, isn't that the right answer? Severed heads can't talk. And no, you've got to give the case to the whole department, right? Just like in real life, you can't cherry pick your favorite cop. Yeah, and Gotham PD is terrible. They let the Joker get away because they forget to check if there's a bomb sewn inside one of the inmates. And then also they get tricked by Bane into getting trapped underground, and then when they get out, the first thing that they decide to do is get into a fist fight with a band of terrorists. Am I remembering that right? Where were their guns? Well, in pretty much any superhero movie is forfeit. If there are vigilantes out cleaning up the streets, then it means that the cops suck at the very same job. In Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, teenage creatures that aren't allowed to interact with anybody blow the lid off of a Foot Clan crime before trained detectives. Only reason cops show up at all in the X-Men movies is so the mutants have some useless meat sacks to toss around. In Winter Soldier, a bunch of fake police corner Nick Fury in the middle of a city, in the middle of the day. So where the hell are the real cops this entire time? Sitting in their convertibles, licking jelly out of each other's mouths. If it's me, I'm gonna ignore patrolmen altogether. I want a department that has great detectives. I want guys that have a track record of taking down serial killers who hunt guys like Daniel for sport. That's why I'm going with seven. Guys like Daniel? Which one of the seven do you think I am? Are you saying that murdering a serial killer execution style is the same as closing the books on a case? Hang on, this, this is important. Oh, also, uh, the only reason they caught Kevin Spacey is because he turned himself in. I mean, they didn't even have fingerprints on the guy before he just waltzes in the front door of the police department. And for the first half of the movie, Morgan Freeman is just bitching and moaning about how he doesn't even want the case. This can't be my last duty. It's pride, right? I'm gonna say it was pride. She was very pretty. Fine, then uh, lethal weapon. Mm, but remember, there's no guarantee that you'll get Riggs or Murtaugh. Yeah, fine. That's great, actually. Every time that they work a case, they end up destroying half the city. I want the quiet cops who just keep their heads down while Riggs is off dislocating his shoulder at the water cooler. So just standard LAPD detectives? Except it's way worse. You got these two high-profile guys in your squad that criminals actively target. The bad guys tried to blow up Danny Glover with a toilet bomb. The South Africans drowned Mel Gibson's girlfriend. Every other cop on the force is gonna have their hands full just protecting these two guys. And that's the problem with buddy cop movies, right? Rush Hour, Tango and Cash, End of Watch. It's always personal. They are attracting these dangerous, powerful criminals from around the world who specifically want to make sure that these cops are dead, right? And then everyone else in the department has to drop whatever they're working on, just some boring decapitated body inside of a dumpster, to pitch in and help take down the kingpin. She's right. Even if you don't get the two bad boys from that one movie, Bad Boys 2, all of your detectives are gonna be forced to focus on the case that's actually making newspaper headlines. Which is why I'm going old school, back to a simpler time. Little movie called <clears throat> L.A. Confidential. Okay, Michael, you realize that half of the cops in L.A. Confidential are racist, egomaniacal woman abusers, right? Exactly. And this victim happens to be a white middle-class male from a good neighborhood. It's just the kind of meaty case that they'd bend a few rules to solve, if you know what I mean. They might do it dirty, but they'd get it done. It's actually a really good point. Oh, wait, hang on a second. The other half of the department was completely corrupt. There's probably another officer that killed Dane in the first place. It's always the nerdy pencil-pushing narc that gets whacked first in noir. 
Forgot to charge me for the extra toast. I'll add it to the tip. It's not just noir, okay? Any movie with one or two really good cops inevitably puts them inside of a compromised apartment. That's Training Day, Chinatown, The Departed, SWAT. You probably get a cop whose best interest isn't just burying the case, but burying you. True. Fine. Ooh, okay, I go for my contingency plan, the police department from Elf. I don't... I don't remember a single cop from that movie. Exactly! Nor do you remember any crime. See, the best police department is the one you don't have to think about too much. Trust me, there was not a single burglary, murder, or rape in that whole movie. Uh, wait. A bunch of cops show up at the end, though, when Santa's sleigh crashes in that park. And look at the response time! Okay, so none then? Yeah, I don't think so. Any movie where the stakes are really high, the cops can't be a feasible option. They either have to be incompetent or in bed with the enemy. Or it's a buddy cop movie, in which case they're reckless and they draw the attention of international crime lords. Holy shit. No wonder Katie hates cops so much. There's not a single good or useful department depicted in film. Movies want us to mistrust the police. And it trains would-be cops to believe that the only way to be good at your job is to be a renegade who can't trust anyone. Man, I hope there's like a test to weed out cadets with that mentality. Police Academy. Sure, at the academy level or any part of the training. No, Police Academy, the franchise, I think that's the only example where the department is good across the board. What was the premise of the first movie? A bunch of civilians who have no business being cops get to be cops. It's a terrible idea. Wait, did you kill Daniel? Okay, that's not what happened exactly, right? The, the new mayor passes a law that says that anyone can become a police officer, no matter their race, gender, creed, size. So of course, when they first get into the academy, they totally suck, but then after training, they're thrown headfirst into their very first First assignment, which is a citywide riot where they successfully apprehend armed criminals and the police don't fire a single shot. And it's not just luck either. In Police Academy 2, they get transferred to the worst precinct in the city and they manage to shut down a huge drug syndicate and turn the whole city around. I mean, they're clumsy, but across seven movies, they consistently get the job done. Police Academy essentially opens up policing to the citizens, allowing them to police themselves. And it totally works! It's a pretty anarchic idea for an 80s movie. It's actually kind of genius. Well, wait, how is that any different from the way it works in the real world? Can't anyone who passes the academy become a cop? Yeah, I don't know. I think so, though. Oh! Was the guy who pulled you over super good at sound effects? No. But was he a womanizer? No. Okay, but was he fat? Like, was he a big fat guy? Yeah, actually he was. I knew it! Classic Leslie Barbara. Are we positive he couldn't do sound effects or wasn't good at them? Did you ask I was him just to thinking not about come that. up? When you heard the sirens, did you notice? Were there lights on? Or was he just opening his mouth? I, I forgot to check completely. That's weird. That's the first thing I check. Yeah. Oh, thank God. What took you guys so long? Well, we got pulled over. You yelled at a cop? She yelled at a cop? Please, you hadn't changed over your tags. Show me where that falls under protect and serve. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Script, script. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was just seeing. Let's redo the entrance. No, wait, hang on. Oh, Stan will probably have to be in the shot. <laughs> it's always the nerdy pencil pushing. Damn it. I can do it. Okay. It's always the needly, needly. Nerdy pencil pushing. Nerdy little needly. Needle. 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 <laughs> it's always the nerdy pencil pushing narc that gets doffed in a. W w w w oh, damn it! <laughs> it's so easy. Come on. Nice. Yeah. Nerdy pencil pushing. Nerdy pencil pushing what? Narc. It's always the weedy. Oh, man. Nerdy. You're not weedy at all. <laughs> not weedy or needly. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the nerdy pencil pushing narc that gets offed first in a noir. So close. It's always the nerdy pencil-pushing narc that gets whacked first in noir. 